Can we proceed? Proceed. Yes, yes, you can. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. So thank you for joining this webinar. I I think that you can hear me well, okay? If not, please raise your hands or <laughs> yes, interrupt me whenever it's uh, uh, whenever you like. So I I would love to have an interaction interact interactive uh, webinar. So please don't hesitate and ask as many questions as you have. So ideally, with the first webinar that I'm presenting is how to build a sustainable urban mobility plan. So I know, and I know that you know <laughs> that that's at the city level. But I think somehow some of the ideas and some of the steps from the sustainable urban mobility plan can be adapted to the neighborhood level. So what I want to show you is that uh, even though we have um, some ideas of how to implement several actions for the for improving mobility at neighborhood level, there are some uh, preliminary steps. There are some steps for the implementation that you need to take before, during the execution, and after the and after it's uh, already implemented, and that has to be taken into account. So I just want to give you some insights on what's a sustainable urban mobility plan. What are the steps? to uh, implement the, the what we call the SUMP, and then to provide some examples where uh, CETLC as the, the, the partner that is uh, involved in, or expert in, in, in urban distribution and good distribution in, in, in cities, um, how this uh, part should be introduced into the projects and how you envision that could be uh, adapted into your plans for your neighborhood, neighborhoods. So let's start. This is the agenda. So first of all, I'm going to briefly explain what SASAM. Um, I will follow with the benefits of, of implementing a sustainable urban mobility plan in cities or neighborhood areas, let's say. And then I will summarize the steps from 1 to 11 on the implementation of a sustainable urban mobility plan and some of the, of the uh, objectives to be taken into account and that I consider that are quite interested um, to uh, analyze for the Sunrise project. Uh, finally, I will uh, finish with some good practices. There are only, well, three examples that I took from the literature, but uh, then it can better illustrate uh, what I'm referring to, and maybe you can think about some other uh, questions on how to uh, mm, implement this into your ideas, then we can discuss. So the idea is to have like a brief, brief presentation, and then uh, we can have a debate or interaction among all the cities and settle C. Okay? So let's move to what uh, what's a, a sustainable urban mobility plan. So the, the, the literature says that that's a strategic, a strategic plan that is designed to satisfy the mobility needs of people and businesses in cities and their surroundings uh, for, uh, of course, a better quality of life. So it involves that it needs integration of people, it needs participation of the people, all the stakeholders should participate on that and needs to evaluate the principles. So it means it it means planning for people, and I would say it means planning for people and planning for business as well. So uh, why planning for business? Because the creation of businesses in cities or in neighborhoods neighborhoods involves also the create the the, uh, the growth on uh, the the growth of economy. If you grow on economy, you also improve the quality of life. So that's the main idea I want to transmit to you during the during this webinar. So uh, um, we we're going to go beyond the concept. Um, uh, for instance, uh, how we how we envision the cities in 20 years. So we want to have places where our children play safely. We want to have uh, air clean in our cities. We want to go walking for shopping. Uh, we want we want to have like uh, lots of parks, green areas. And we want we want to have a place where businesses can prosper. So, uh, however, uh, we have some contradictions in our daily life. So, uh, um, for instance, if you balance the high quality of life with a, an attractive environment for businesses, or if you uh, put in a balance uh, in the balance restricting restrictions of, on traffic versus um, the necessary movements for goods in cities, or if you also balance ensuring mobility. Uh, versus financial cons constraints, for instance. So you need to do, to do something to balance both, and it involves uh, also uh, implementing uh, 
actions related to uh, better mobility for citizens with actions related to freight movements in cities. So um, the Sustainable Urban Mobility Plan includes the idea of, uh, of, of this integrated approach, the balance of all the transport modes, and also uh, to encourage the shift um, towards a, a more sustainable uh, transport mode. Um, also, as an introduction, I would say that the Sustainable Urban Mobility Plan uh, involves a long-term vision for all the people in the, in the city or in the neighborhood area. It involves also the participatory approach, the balance and integration of all transport modes, also horizontal and vertical integration, and the, of course, uh, once the, the, the measures or the plan is already implemented, you need to assess of the current, the current and the future performance. And uh, the Sustainable Urban Mobility, Mobility Plan needs also a regular monitoring, constant review, and reporting of the of the actions that have uh, taken place. Okay, so uh, if you see the table that is on the screen, then um, you see how things have uh, are uh, have been performed or are really uh, or, or are currently running in in some of the cities around the world, which is what we call the traditional transport planning and uh, the difference uh, considering a sustainable urban mobility plan. So I'm, I'm just going to mention a few of them. So, for instance, a traditional transport planning is focused on traffic, whereas the sustainable urban mobility plan is focused on people. So, which is the the, the spirit of a Sunrise project, in fact. So, um, the current uh, transport planning is a model focus. So, we want to have like a balanced development of all relevant transport modes in order to, well, improving those that are less pollutant, for instance, or in order to reduce congestion in roads and shifting to bike cycling, etc. So we're not focused on now on infrastructure. So what we want to aim is to integrate a set of actions to achieve cost-effective uh, solutions. Um, we're not thinking about a short and medium-term delivery plan. So we want to have a long-term vision. So we're going to implement measures that are um, that, that are uh, have a durability on time that are uh, thought for a long for a long-term strategy. Um, we don't want uh, we don't want to have like a, traffic engineers thinking alone about what the best measures are to be implemented in the city. We want to have like an interdis interdisciplinary planning teams. It means that we want to involve all the stakeholders. So not only the citizens and not only the public administration, we want to involve all of the actors, considering all the segments of population, but also actors in, in terms of businesses, um, cargo operators, uh, public administration, public companies, and uh, like, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, it's not a, the, the current system is planned by experts, but we're going, we want to have a, like a set of stakeholders and provide transparency. It means that decisions are taken in, in a group, but uh, there's, uh, the decisions are transparent at any moment. So you are going to report every year with a new strategy to the, to the citizens and also to, the, to all the stakeholders, all the actors that are involved in the process. Okay, no questions so far? Okay, so let's continue with this. Um, I have a problem like moving to the next slide. Yeah. Second, please. Okay. So let me show you uh, um, just a few benefits of uh, implementing an urban, a sustainable urban mobility plan. So as I mentioned at the beginning, so we want we want to improve the, the quality of life. Uh, the, in this case, following the Sunrise uh, project at neighborhood level. Um, but of course, we want to save cost. We want to create economic benefits. So we want to save cost in the in in the actions that we're going to implement. And but we also um, considering also the the freight movement and the freight delivery in cities. We want to we want to reduce costs. I'll show you an example at the end. So if you don't implement that part in the sustainable urban mobility plan at the end, you're going to increase the, the cost of deliveries, of, of freight delivery. I will explain later on why. Uh, we want to contribute, and the benefit, one of the benefits is that it contributes to better health and environment. So those uh, actions for improving mobility in cities are um, contribute to the to walking, continue to use like a uh, cycling. Um, some other transport modes more uh, 
uh, environmental friendly. Um, we uh, also are benefiting from making mobility seamless and improving access and, and making more effective use of limited resources. Um, also another benefit is that we win public support with these actions. So all these actions are normally sustainable urban mobility plans are all, always supported by the public administrations. We can better prepare better plans um we uh, one of the also the benefits are fulfilling legal obligations effectively uh it makes a uh, feasible using synergies increasing relevance and moving towards a new mobility culture which i think that could be the most relevant one as uh, we are experiencing a, a big change uh, in comparison to what the, the concept that we had in the past so uh, the Sustainable Urban Mobility Plan, I'm not going to go into detail of every single step, but uh, it has 11 main steps to fulfill. So these are those that can be shown on the, on the slide. That's been taken from the Civitas project. So there are 11, 11 steps. And what I want to mention from here is that um, you had in mind in the Sunrise project several ideas of implementation for, of measures implementation for your neighbor, neighborhoods. Um, ideally, uh, what I've seen in Sunrise is that you have an idea can be like better use of space, that can be like a, a better education for children uh, while using bicycles for going to school, or can be um, whatever, better use of uh, um, making uh, the use of space nicer for, uh, for citizens, etc., etc. So those ideas, and I've seen along the project that uh, you all are working hard on the developing on those ideas on how to they can be implemented but i would like i would like to i would like to reinforce that um maybe you could use those steps to uh, because there is a very big and um, uh, very strict preparatory actions that uh, uh, following this those steps that are necessary at the time of uh, defining the the measure so let's let's go um for instance um there are like six preliminary steps Number six could be the implementation of the measure, and afterwards there, there's a kind of monitoring and uh, learning lessons from what you have implemented. But for me, the, the five first steps are preparatory actions for that, and I think you can take the essence of this for your for your measure ideas on your on your or your on your cities on at your neighbor, neighborhood levels uh, to, that could be taken into account. For instance, first one is determine your potential for a successful uh, sustainable urban mobility plan. So every single step is uh, divided in, in several tasks. And each one of the tasks um, have uh, different objectives. I'm not gonna mention all of them, but for instance, what you have to do, what you have to do on step one is establish uh, sustainable principles as part of the uh, of your of your neighborhood or your or of the or the city policies uh, having a broad agreement on making sustainable principles so it's like a very generic very a very high level on how to establish the principles that are going to lead the sustainable urban mobility plan so this step you have to define the timeline when are you how long is going to be your project and, and your idea implementation and of course identify the key actors and stakeholders that are going to be involved. So when you go to the second step, is define the development process and the scope of plan. So you need to approve the geographical coverage of your, of your solutions. Uh, you need to integrate between the ur urban mobility planning and other policies. You need to formalize, because in the previous step you have defined the, um, the key actors and stakeholders, but now you need to allocate a specific role for, for each of them. And uh, then you have to ensure at every moment that you have enough transparency and assess the risks of the implementation of the measures. So if we go to step three, is analyze the mobility situation and develop scenarios. So it means that the uh, main idea coming from his is that you need to prepare the analysis of problems, you need to develop scenarios, but you need to develop also alternative scenarios for future development and uh, uh, make sure that uh, there is an acceptance of uh, by all the stakeholders of the different strategies that you have proposed. Going to uh, step four, develop a common vision. Um, so basically, um, you need to look beyond what, uh, of the concept of transport and mobility and you need to prioritize, to set the priorities 
and act actively inform the, the, the public on the, on the different stakeholders that are asking them. Step five is to set priorities and measurable targets. Oops, here again, here, we're having a problem with this. Sorry for that. Here we are, okay. So step number five, uh, we need to set priorities and measurable targets. So it, mean, it means that we need to define a set of targets to achieve the objectives and that needs to be done before, uh, during this step. Then we will go, oh, sorry again. Yeah, for some reason it's not working well. The PowerPoint is yeah, not a, sometimes it, the yeah, full screen is not yeah. working. Yeah. Okay, so then once you have uh, already uh, committed with those uh, previous five steps, for me this is one of the most important ones. So step uh, step six is where I think most of you are in that moment in the Sunrise project. It is, and uh, it's basically developing effective packages of measures. So during this uh, step, uh, there are several attacks allocated, alloca allocated. So one is identif identification of most effective measures, learning from other experiences, which, uh, which is exactly what we are doing now, uh, considering the best value for money, where to invest the money, and uh, using synergies among the different actors to create integrated packages of measures. So we need to select here um, the best options, ensure that we are willing to exploit the, our synergies be between the different measures and the different actors. So that is the basically, and for me, that would be one of the most important uh, steps to follow during the sustainable implementation urban, um, uh, sustainable urban mobility plan. But uh, in the previous ones, uh, don't for, bear in mind that it has to be have to be taken into account as well. <laughs> Not answering. Okay. Here we go. That's kind of manual system. <laughs> so I cannot help you. So to go to the following slide. Okay. Um, then we will go to step number seven. So we need to make. We need to. Um, Sorry. We need to agree on clear responsibilities and allocation. Uh, we need to allocate the different budgets, and um, we need to um, evaluate and assess the different risks after the, the definition of the different measures and ensure continue ensuring transparency for sure. And um, when we go to step number five, we are talking about building monitoring and assessment into the plan. So we need to build a sustainable uh, monitoring and evaluation uh, arrangement. We need to develop sustainable mechanisms to assess the quality of the planning process as well. Okay. And then we only have, have three more steps. Sorry, but the computer is frozen, so. So one of the last steps is uh, adopting the sustainable urban mobility plan. So we need to check the, the quality of the plan is uh, accordingly to what we have defined pre uh, previously. We need to ensure and to foster acceptance of the plan, um, adopt the plan and create the ownership of the plan. Um, on step number 10, we need to ensure the proper management and communication, uh, ensure the acceptance of the measures by all the citizen stakeholders that are uh, willing to, to, to use the, the, the new measures, um, uh, keep, tra keep track of the progress, identify the possible problems that we, are, we, we, we may face, and inform regularly the stakeholders about the process. And finally, we need to learn the lessons. So that's really important, and that's something that I, I encourage you to do as well with the implementing on implementing on, on solutions at the neighborhood level. So we need to respond to new developments. We need to optimize the implementation process. We need to analyze the planning process. 
and also reflect on experiences with the current planning cycle, also with a, with a view to the new challenges ahead. So basically, these are the 11, um, the 11 steps. Um, the, 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 the guide for the sustainable urban mobility uh, plan, planning is uh, full of uh, examples. What I want to mention here are three examples related to the uh, urban, um, the, the freight delivery in cities. Uh, because I think it's not 100% um, reflected in, in, the, in, the sur or in the sustainable urban mobility plans or uh, the cities uh, didn't, take, didn't take this into account when implementing the, the urban mobility plans. So both must, citizens and goods must be considered at the same time. And if you forget one, that is very difficult at the end to, uh, to uh, how, do, how do you say, um, uh, to implement that, the, the, other, the other side. Uh, when uh, considering the case of uh, Brussels, for instance, uh, Brussels, oh, sorry, that's the previous one, yeah. yeah. Um, so Brussels uh, had a plan for goods transport. So they uh, they elaborated a strategic plan for uh, transport of goods in the city of uh, of Brussels uh, because 30 percent, as they account they accounted like a, a 30 percent of the of the urban greenhouse gases were coming from freight transport. So they wanted to provide like a kind of a win-win situation for all the stakeholders and they developed like three different um, they developed like um, a program with three different um, points so first of all they uh, limited and they optimized the road freight movements uh, to and from the city center and they initiated a kind of mental shift to move from road transport to other transport modes less congested such as uh, water and rail transport and they encouraged um, to a last urban mile with uh, green lorries. So that's a practice that is becoming most, more and more popular in, in some other cities, are, are becoming more, more and more popular in some other cities around Europe. And the third point was to facilitate the operators of haulers and, and, and freight companies. That's really important as well. Something similar in Ile de France. So they wanted to integrate the, the concept of city logistics. So most part of um, it's happening in Ile de France, but it's happening in, in some other cities. The freight logistics are performed performed by private companies. That's something that's uh, something that everyone know, knows. But uh, uh, the the main concern is that those private companies they have their distribution centers normally uh, in the perimeter of the city, normally in the on the belts, road belts of the city. Um, so it's affecting the the service into the the inbound service into the city center. So the population is suffering from emissions, noise, congestion uh, that is generated that are generated by by the deliveries. So um, in the France, while elaborating the sustainable urban mobility plan, so they took that into account and they uh, developed some innovative uh, measures to 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 face with the problem. Um, so the region uh, created a body bringing together all the re relevant stakeholders. So those that were part of the of this uh, body were haulers, uh, transport companies. They consider also chambers of commerce. They consider also industry, different state departments, the the public, uh, the city, the city hall of, of Paris of, uh, uh, as well. They consider also the regional planning office and the national environmental agency. So what they wanted to do with the, with this whole group was to encourage and finance innovative city logistics projects so um, why because well they encourage also the, the shift to waterway and railway as they were flexible to deliver to deliver fre freight and uh, they wanted to uh, account the impacts on emission and congestion with the innovative measures that they were uh, thinking about um, as a conclusion of this, I, I well, I, I, I just want to add that the general public, that is to say that the citizens were also involved through the organization of a mobility forum, and they, they were organizing like periodic debates with with those uh, uh, with this uh, within the, the framework of this mobility forum, just to involve the the different citizens on that. Um, the case of uh, Zaragoza, I think in the in the meeting of uh, South Bend, 
uh, we had the opportunity or, or I had the opportunity to talk with some of with uh, some of you about the case of Zaragoza. That's a, well, it's the city where I live and, and, and that's a, I think it's a very good example of how things uh, of how things uh, should be or shouldn't be done. Um, the city of Zaragoza is mentioned several times in the guidelines of sustainable urban mobility plans as an example of a best practice for implementation of a sustainable urban mobility plan. However, it's not true at all. So the city, um, the city was uh, involved in this movement. It's, they, they were facing similar problems as the problems that you are facing at the neighborhood level. So um, we had um, areas with a uh, low accessibility of public transport, for instance. Um, we wanted to promote, or the, the, the public administration, the city hall wanted to promote like, to promote like better um, accessibility by bikes. Uh, they wanted to integrate a system, uh, a system um, with the with the bus, and let's say like, integrating a ticketing system, for instance. We uh, so they decided to uh, renew the the current plan and well getting involved in this concept concept of a sustainable urban mobility plan. So uh, the tram is, as you can see on the picture on the left, uh, our tram line is operative since uh, 2012, I think. Um, around 2012, uh, it was uh, inaugurated a new uh, line tram. And the city was uh, full after that uh, year of um, green paths for bicycles. So if you see a map of the city, you can go to whatever point in the city by bike. Um, there are some areas in which, uh, of course, there not 100% of the streets have a, a bicycle path, but uh, we have like a streets which uh, those that don't have a path for bicycles have a speed limit of uh, 30 kilometers per hour. So the problem came after implementation of all those measures that are really nice for mobility and have uh, put the city into the top of the uh, mobility and, and greening and et cetera. But the problem came after that when businesses and also when the private operators and private companies that are operating in the city complain about that. Because some areas, some uh, roads that uh, were uh, usable for vehicles, for private vehicles, and also for vans and lorries to circulate. Now they they were not allowed because of the tram, for instance, or because there were a path uh, uh, a path for bicycles, and they then the the loading and unloading area had been remo removed. El pedestrian and pedestrian area. So so the the trends are to become uh, or to transform the road into pedestrian areas. Uh, which is really nice, but uh, we, they didn't consider the, the, the city deliveries, the, the freight deliveries into the city, and they were, um, well, they were facing a really big problem. That's the reason why they, they came to us. So CETELC participated after the developing of the Sustainable Urban Mobility Plan and on a plan to uh, develop some innovative solutions to, to deal with this, to, to try to uh, satisfy both the businesses and also the, the companies that were operating during the, the city's deliveries in the in the city center. So that's uh, why I, I, I just wanted to show you how important it is to satisfy both. And you are in a, in a point that uh, you are in the process of uh, defining the measures that you want to implement, so you have the power to decide uh, what you want. And that's the moment, later on, maybe it's late. <laughs> so that's the, the right moment just to, to decide what you want to do in your, at, at the at the neighborhood area okay something just to finalize my introduction which i guess is been longer than expected <laughs> so the last one i just wanted to show you this picture so that's the main picture of the of the sustainable urban mobility plan guidelines um i became part of the uh, committee of experts uh, some years ago to discuss about how the freight delivery had been treated in those guidelines. And, and that was the first picture that we analyzed. And uh, what we were very surprised because it covers very well the concept of mobility and the concept of use of space. You can see the terrace and uh, the concept of using public transport and the using of uh, bikes. 
and uh, people is on the street and people is walking, people are walking and people are, well, they, they are safe enough uh, in, in this area. However, considering free delivery, you cannot uh, have any idea of how the terrace is going to be replenished because it's not accessible by a van, for instance. So we complain about that. So it doesn't mean that we don't want a, a, a place like this. Um, I'm participating in the Sunrise Project and I, and I want a better atmosphere in my city and on, in, in all the cities I can visit in the world, but it uh, needs to be considered also uh, the growth of the cities and, and the, and the uh, coexistence of uh, both uh, citizens and goods. So I just put this picture just to think about it and, and well, it, I'm open to all the questions that the, uh, you, I'm sure you, you have by now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Susanna. Welcome. So it's time for questions. Yeah, just to say that we don't have any questions in the chat. So, I mean, anyone can feel free to just speak up um, if you have any questions verbally, but I'll be happy to field them in the chat uh, area mm -hmm. as well. Maybe I can start with, with the questions. <laughs> I wonder if you have something similar in your in your cities, or um, and also if uh, the level of uh, definition of the of the different measures, and if you see that city uh, freight deliveries can be included in your plans. And also, my third question would be: How do you envision that uh, we could help you? And um, we we would like to uh, continue from the TLC. Uh, that was a very generic uh, webinar and I would like to know what your expectations are and what would be a topic for in, of interest for the next one. Hello, I'm Damien from Edinburgh and APA University, and uh, I have a question, please. Uh, sure. A question? Yeah. Um, I was wondering uh, uh, whether you um, have uh, investigated into or considered the use of um, alternative um, means of um, vehicles or, or uh, um, alternative means of um, uh, loading, unloading, and basically uh, uh, um, feeding goods into city centers, into into urban areas. Um, things like I don't know deliveries by bikes or or mm. maybe combining passenger transport with with freight. Maybe part of the tram can mm. be some kind of um, uh, can be it can also be used to mm. uh, uh, deliver goods. Um, uh, also, um, I don't know what is the infrastructure of the city like but for example in other cities we have examples of some of the um, uh, uh, um, natural characteristics of the mm -hmm. city for example proximity of a canal or anything like that being used um, to uh, 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 make deliveries into city centers uh, uh, um, yeah, more sustainable and environmentally friendly. So I wonder whether, um, you know, what kind of uh, mm, uh, means of uh, uh, um, freight um, vehicles and also transport have you considered and implemented? Sure. So those more environmental friendly uh, means of transport are becoming more and more popular. Um, 
particularly speaking, and this is an extended concept, but for instance, in Barcelona, Spain, um, they have uh, innovated in the concept of uh, the super blocks. So the super blocks are uh, blocks of uh, uh, 400 square uh, meters uh, maximum where uh, traffic, normal traffic is uh, uh, normally restricted. So it's only for residentials. And um, the wider distance of 400 square meters is because uh, that's a walking distance to access to the public transport. Uh, within those super blocks, uh, there are proximity businesses, proximity stores, uh, proximity commerces, small stores. Small stores. Uh, the way they replenish them is by using uh, bikes, let's say electric or non-electric bikes, uh, with a maximum um, uh, loading uh, cargo of uh, those electrics. Have a, I've seen that here in Spain and have a maximum loading cargo of 180 kilograms. And they are electrics, but uh, you can have non-electric electric bikes for small parcels or for small um, small parcels in general. So that's uh, becoming popular, and in Barcelona, it's uh, innovated this in Spain. I've seen this in my city as well in some other cities. Um, the use of bikes for proximity uh, uh, for uh, stores of proximity. So. There, there are a lot of people now that is coming back to a model where um, instead of buying via email, uh, instead of buying via internet or using the e-commerce or going to the big mall that is in the in the outskirts of the city, so there are more and more people that prefer to come back to a, a, pre, a previous model, and this kind of actions are becoming more and, pop, and more popular. Uh, regarding auto, autonomous vehicles, uh, well. Um, it's not a, non autonomous, but the uh, technology is uh, in, in some, in, in a sense, uh, improving. So, the way in which we collect the, the waste and the organic waste in the city, so they have developed a, a, a truck which is uh, technically willing to take the bin and throw out the organic into the truck by itself without, the, without any manual action. So. You only have a driver, but they automatically does that, uh, does uh, this activity. Um, what else? Um, oh, what was the... Regarding um, some other um, non-environmental, uh, oh yeah, the railway, I, I forgot that. Um, we have participated in the past with uh, uh, we, we were in conversations in the past with the uh, rail uh, or the tram, uh, uh, the tram uh, owners or the tram uh, association in, in, in our city, because they were really interested in, in sending freight from the uh, depots, from the uh, distribution centers through to the city center. And I think there are similar examples in Paris. They had a similar example with uh, with a supermarket uh, chain as well. And, uh, yeah. And we did this uh, in the past, but we didn't, well, that was part of a project and it wasn't funded at the end. But we were in conversations with the tram authorities just to, to deliver freight uh, using the tram. And that was a very good idea because the tram is uh, operative from 6 a.m. till uh, midnight or 1 a.m. in the morning. So there is a, a few hours during the night that in, in which we could have a, an operative uh, a wagon of the, of the tram just to, to carry all the all the all the goods to the city center. We were also in conversation with, with one company that redesigned one of the wagons of the of the tram just to to be willing to to load a, a freight into 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 the into the tram. So there are some actions that could be performed as well in, at the at the city and at the neighborhood level. Thank you very much. And uh, just one last thing, which is related to my question. Recently, I attended a meeting and uh, um, <clears throat> uh, one of the issues discussed was the uh, emerging and, uh, well, not emerging, but uh, basically f uh, the, 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 the further expansion rather of, of the on-demand economy. Uh, um, which includes, for example, food deliveries, deliveries of um, items, um, which um, 
in a way shifts the focus from uh, um, from, from urban city centers to the outskirts the outskirts of a, of a city for example mm -hmm. or or within the whole city so i wonder whether um, you have looked into these aspects of uh, um, as well of uh, things like food deliveries amazon deliveries um yeah and, uh, uh, and whether these can be integrated into the current network of urban of of, of urban logistics deliveries yeah food deliveries uh, what i've seen is, is that they are currently delivered by uh, non pollutant uh, most part of them are delivered by non pollutant uh, means of transport so you mean that you order food by uh, via by internet and then it's delivered in less than half an hour to your to, the, to your residence, to your home. So uh, what I've seen is that, at least in Spain, they, they are very competing. So there are several companies competing among them because it's becoming a, a, a new emerging uh, uh, market on that. And they use normally non-pollutant means of transport just to do that. Yeah, what they call riders that they use, bicycles or yeah. motorcycles, exactly. uh, electric motorcycles, yeah. on even yeah. the- The kickboards, yeah, and et cetera. Yeah, uh, so, sorry to intervene. Hi, this is Juana from Polis. Can I just yeah. intervene on this um, aspect of yeah. the less pollutant? Uh, because it's not always the case. From city to city, I think it differs. Yeah, there are uh, what we notice here in Brussels is um, the prevalence of Uber Eats. Uh, mm. And although we had less pollutant um, uh, alternatives such as Deliveroo, uh, because uh, Uber caters uh, food from far away, so it has a bigger um, array of, of restaurants and it doesn't have a kilometer limit, whilst Deliveroo oh. had a geo geofencing, geospatial, let's say, um, area where you could only order food if it was within five kilometers or something oh. like this from your house so that the deliveries can come by bike, uh, people resort to Uber deliveries because of the convenience. It's the same delivery price um, and the, deliver, um, the people who deliver are not in any way obliged to have any kind of clean vehicle. So uh, you get quite a bit of a disturbance on smaller, narrow streets, which can be usually quiet, especially in the weekend. Uh, you can always hear at least uh, one scooter, noisy scooter, polluting scooter um, driving that way. Um, so it really depends on um, licensing and how the city yeah. manages these agreements uh, yeah. when these deliveries start to operate. So that there are no incentives, as uh, you as you explained, there are no incentives for those using uh, non-pollutant vehicles, let's say. And people prefer to use uh, the, the most extended app uh, because it's easier. Uh, yes, I mean, Deliveroo was uh, doing quite well until recently, but now they are delivering also by car because uh, they have to <laughs> uh, they have to keep up with uh, with Uber and other competitors. Yeah. Uh, so but, they're driving the market down, I would say. Yeah, in fact, there are much to do still uh, in the in the field of uh, e-commerce. Uh, yeah, uh, from providing uh, incentives for those who use non-pollutant means of uh, transport to regulate in some cases in some countries, because for instance, Uber is a, is a, is not legal in Spain, or yeah. at least not legal in some of the cities. Some others, well, they are fighting. Yeah, in Zaragoza it is yeah. not, not In Zaragoza it's still, it's still not, yeah. not legal. And in, Bar in Barcelona and Madrid they have some problems lately. Yeah. And, and they, they became banning. illegal and mm -hmm. they are subject to some regulations as well. And the e-commerce has a lot of to explore yet because, well, uh, uh, Damian was mentioning Amazon. Um, there is a new way of uh, sending parcels via Amazon. So we are experiencing that, uh, that uh, when when you uh, order a parcel and you're not at home, then it comes back to the depot. Or, and we, what is becoming um, more and more extended in parcel our country is, is the concept of a parcel lockers. So now you can uh, ask for a parcel locker for free in your place of work, for instance. So it, it consists on a big box with several uh, spaces, several holes. 
So the, you can order to Amazon or to whatever uh, company you have uh, uh, bought, uh, whatever. And, uh, and then uh, the, the, the operator, uh, the transport operator, deliver this into one of the boxes of the parcel locker. And then uh, automatically it, they send you a, a, code, uh, a barcode. Then you go with your mobile phone to the parcel locker closer to you when you decided to, to receive your, your parcel. Can be a, a, a public building, can be a private as well. They, you usually found them, uh, find them on the, at the lobbies of the main buildings. And then with your mobile phone and the barcode, then you can open the, the box and then you, you take your, your parcel. And you can use it in both directions. You can use it, use it for returns and you can use it just to, 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 to receive the, the parcels. And there's a, a, a another uh, something new that is uh, uh, that has been developed uh, after the parcel lockers is that you can have one of these a smaller one at your uh, at your home. So if you live in a neighborhood uh, in a residential area with some neighborhoods, and then you can have like a small parcel lock for for your yes, for envelopes and for very small parcels and, and envelopes basically. Um, further than the concept of uh, the postal service that we, we all have in, in our residential areas. But there's a lot of to explore then related to e-commerce. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other question? Or anything you want to comment about your cities and your neighborhood levels? So if there are no more questions, what we can do is just to, to, to stop the webinar, but uh, I'm open to receive via email any question, any comment uh, um, to, to, start, to continue working on this or in any other topic that you may consider relevant in the future. We will also upload the, the slides that we use today in the, in the platform. Um, Sorry, can I have one last comment, please? Oh, please, go ahead. Uh, yeah, yeah, just one last comment. I'm thinking that uh, the uh, emphasis so far, uh, um, um, when we when we think about alleviating or solving problems in um, in urban areas uh, relating to deliveries and, uh, for example. Um, you know, clearing of uh, rubbish and reverse logistics, et cetera, et cetera, is on, is on the use of technology. So, uh, um, and I know that uh, everybody is thinking about, for example, cleaner vehicles or, um, uh, you know, for example, some quieter vehicles or, um, I don't know, uh, maybe driverless uh, vehicles. Um, autonomous vehicles, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, the the focus really is on technology, or the focus yeah. is on yeah. the development of some kind of platforms, logistics platforms. For example, e-logistics platforms, mm. consolidation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But mm -hmm. I I think that uh, um, maybe the 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 focus, the the. Um, um, the use of technology probably has already reached some kind of saturation point and i think more and more we need to look at uh, changes of behavior or changes of non-technology aspects for example and also these uh, solutions have to be implemented into the sustainable urban logistics plans i don't think currently they are uh, so I don't know. Do you share that view? And uh, what uh, um, are the current developments in your city um, uh, related to, for example, you uh, um, when you discussed um, deliveries, Amazon deliveries or deliver or, or food deliveries, and and you mentioned about regulation. I think regulation is 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 something. Or Luana, I think mentioned about regulation. Sorry, uh, um, it was Luana who mentioned about uh, regulation. So I think uh, yes, regulation is extremely important, and um, uh, consolidation of deliveries with some uh, with some conventional retailers. 
uh, or use of delivery methods that do not add to congestion or other problems such as walking, cycling. Um, so basically these are all things that uh, need to be considered and in my in my view then they're, they're currently not part of the sustainable sustainable urban mobility plans plans or sustainable urban logistics plans yeah for mm -hmm. sure that's a very good question um we we tend to think about a uh, non-pollutant uh, transport modes when we are talking about uh, free delivery, improving mobility in cities, implementing sustainable urban mobility plans. But it's true that with the use of technology, we can uh, improve the quality of life in cities and we can reduce congestion without meaning that we're going to use a, a, a non-pollutant uh, mean of transport, let's say a, a diesel car or a fuel, conventional uh, fuel car. So a very good ex example of this is the use of uh, sensors on bins, for instance, on wasting uh, waste bins or uh, bins for recycling uh, clothes or whatever kind of bins for recycling that you can find in the city. So, what the sensors? Uh, what do the sensors? Uh, what's the role of the sensors? So, the sensors are within the, each one of the bins, and once they have, uh, they detect that uh, it's uh, they are over 75 or 85 percent of their capacity. Then they send a signal to the to the depot where, and then the the, the truck goes and 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 and, and takes uh, the, takes back all the all the organic waste or whatever it's on the on the bin. It means that it can help to reduce the number of trips within the city. It means that then you can reduce the the, the pollution within the city as well. So sensors in this sense, and there are thousands of applications of the sensors can better improve the quality of life in cities and they should and technology is uh, goes really fast and and of course as you said the regulation is not taking into account the this uh, fast movement to the new technology advancements and and and, and the new technological era and that has to be taken into account as well and for sure mm -hmm. that those developments should be including as well thank you very much thank you you're welcome Okay, so if there are no more questions, uh, as Teresa mentioned to you, we will upload uh, this uh, presentation into the platform, to the SharePoint, uh, but I, I'm open, so you will have my email address, so I'm open to uh, continue the debate via email, or if you, you want to have a separate call just to, well, to further discuss about it, or if you want to suggest another specific topic in, you, which, in, in which you would like to, to, or you would be interested in. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I can make Thank a suggestion on the topic. Yeah, I please. will be I will be extremely interested in discussing um, urban logistics uh, and the on-demand economy. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether uh, this could be of interest to, to, to cities or to you, but uh, I think the on-demand economy is ever-growing and uh, I, I think that currently uh, a lot of the research in urban logistics is on um, city center areas, urban deliveries, uh, rubbish collection, waste, uh, waste collection, reverse logistics, but very little research has been done in the area of the of uh, of uh, on-demand economy and uh, deliveries uh, related to the on-demand on the on-demand economy. And it, it kind of uh, the uh, um, um, in my in my mind both uh, um, on-demand economy and urban logistics they almost exist as two parallel uh, um, worlds. So um, I don't know. I uh, I'm just talking on, on top of my head whether uh, whether whether the whether urban logistics and the on, on and developments in the on-demand economy could be a topic of another uh, discussion. So let, let's uh, okay. So let's uh, give the others uh, some time to think about it, and if there's an interesting uh, audience interested on that, then I can proceed with this. Yeah, this was just a suggestion for a topic. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. Thank you very much. Christine, are you yes. there? Yes. Um, okay. <laughs> Hello. Um, so I have a 
suggestion maybe as well um, yeah. for a future discussion, um, maybe to go a bit more into the practicalities of um, consolidation, consolidation centers uh, and deliveries by cargo bikes. We have mm -hmm. now in Civitas um, some projects that uh, started working on this just at the end of last year. One of them is called the City Changer Cargo Bike. Uh, so this is focusing uh, exclusively on implementing solutions in uh, a few European pilot cities on uh, cargo deliveries, um, not only to transfer goods, but I think also to incentivize families to commute uh, with, with electric cargo bikes. So um, uh, the project will also um, come up with guidelines for cities on how to implement such measures. Um, so there are quite a few, Euro I, I think also Grow Smarter, which is a smart city European project uh, where, where Barcelona is involved, uh, has developed a, a solution for consolidation uh, center, a consolidation center to, to, to bring deliveries from big companies into one point into the city and then deliver into the inner center by a cargo bike. Uh, and it's quite an interesting example to show how they have taken away space because you need to allocate space as a city for such a measure uh, and you need to provide some subsidies to the company that will eventually deliver this, these uh, goods by bike. So um, there are a few interesting examples um, around. Maybe we can focus more on that if this is of interest to the cities uh, active in Sunrise. Um, but otherwise, yes, on demand economy and the impact this has on, on urban areas is also um, really interesting as well. I mean, there are various directions where this can go. Um, okay. But yes, we can continue this conversation by email as well. Very well. Thank you so much, Rana. You're welcome. I also think that the cargo bikes uh, is a very interesting area. Yes. I'm, I'm also very yeah. interested in, in that area. Mm -hmm. Yes. And remember, remember in in Umeo, I think there was a demonstration of a cargo bike, yeah. and people could go uh, um, um, could actually have a trial and uh, ride it a little bit around the city. I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, you could uh, book one from the airport uh, if you wanted to come by bike into the city. Uh huh. Okay. There were ten. 10 bikes available for right. those who, who wanted to exercise a bit <laughs> from the airport. Yeah, but I think that the cargo bike was particularly for um, shopping, you know, going to shops and, uh, and also carrying uh, heavier loads of shopping. And uh, I remember that uh, it was a bit heavier bike and uh, sturdier, heavier, bigger bike. Um, I haven't tried it myself, but... Uh, I remember that there was uh, something like that on, on, on display in email, if I can remember correctly. <laughs> yes, yeah, I think so, yeah. Outside of the venue, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so I'm, I'm collecting all your ideas and then we yeah. will further discuss with the rest of the uh, of the partners that are that have been involved in the in this webinar and are generally in the in the Sunrise project. So the cluster will focus exclusively on um, logistics and uh, SUMP integration of logistics. Oh, that's our expertise. So <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> Ideally, yes. How about sustainable urban logistics plans? Yes. Um, are they going to be, um, you know, to be considered as well? Because they're often neglected, I think. There is very little, um, uh, um, there is a very little discussion about that, I, uh, I think, about them. And not all councils, very, very few councils, especially here in Scotland, very few councils have sustainable urban on logistics plans, for example. Mm, I don't know exactly what's the question. I mean, you mean that, that there, there's only a few cities that could be, that can be considered of having a sustainable urban mobility plan? 
no, 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 no. I was talking about sustainable urban logistics plan, the so-called ah, school. Ah, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, not soup, but soup. There are not many, exactly. Yeah. There are not many. Because normally yeah. this, uh, this part is forgotten. Normally it's for what, it's forgotten sorry? That normally the, the logistics part is forgotten on the mobility plans at cities, at city level. Uh -huh, okay. Yeah. So there are many uh, isolated actions, let's say, in different cities. And there are projects that are promoting. So this project is mostly focused on um, citizens' mobility. There are some other projects that encourage the, the logistics rather than citizens. And the, but uh, in general terms, there are a lot of uh, isolated actions in cities, but they don't have an integrated logistics plan for the city. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Uh... This is Kristen from Ruprecht. I just think it would be interesting with um, in this cluster to maybe there's such a wide range or wide scale of different logistics solutions that we can discuss. Um, so, I mean, everything from an like an urban logistics service center. Uh, so, and that would be serving the whole city, or we could talk about very local, so neighborhood level solutions. And this can even sort of go in the direction of neighbors helping each other by picking up groceries for each other, for example. Yeah. So there's such a, a wide range that we could talk about, and especially what might be more uh, relevant or implementable or, uh, you know, for the, the neighborhood level. Yeah. So making that connection and, uh, no, would be uh, interesting. At the neighborhood level, you, you may think about the impact of a particular measure. So Think about if the impact of a better use of a space, for instance, have an impact on the businesses in the proximity area. So just to think about it, even though you are not considering this, you need to evaluate and you need to assess the possible risks after the implementation yeah. and the possible uh, social, environmental and economic impact of the implementation of an action. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah but just to say, uh, maybe it'll be interesting for the cities to to explore this range of, of different types of logistics solutions and how it can fit in, um, what sort of impact it can have. Just another idea for another uh, way to structure or you know, have uh, other webinar topics focused on certain types of solutions. Mm -hmm. Okay, good, very good. Great. So I think we're done. Thank you very much for your attendance and for the discussion. And thank you for the yeah. presentation. Thank you You're very welcome. much. Yeah. Okay, right. so see you next webinar. So you next, next, yeah. next meeting, next yeah. sunrise meeting. Yes. <laughs> All right, have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Likewise. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, bye-bye.